because we have nothing better to do, let's take a look at assignment D, and that focuses domain 5 with an emphasis on comprehension. Uh, we need to write about 300 words on this one. I would be trying to get as close to that number, maybe a little over, uh, just to be on the safe side, but again, then again, that's just me. You do what works for you. Uh, you'll be identifying a need, writing a lesson plan, and then stating a justification for your lesson plan. The key is alignment. <clears throat> so being sure uh, that you understand the components of comprehension uh, will be very important. You're looking for things like literal, inferential, evaluative comprehension, and applying that to either narrative or expository text. So let's see what we're dealing with here. And uh, this simply explains uh, the word counts and uh, where you're supposed to write it, although you'll be typing it on the uh, little computer, I, I presume. <clears throat> One thing that I would advocate, if I didn't mention this uh, to you before, is to always look at the question. This is all of the stimulus data here, as you can see. So let's take a look and see what the take a look at the question and see what it's asking us for. And it's much the same thing that we've been looking at, but always be sure that you read these things. Um, it's asking for one reading comprehension need demonstrated by the student, and I'm telling you to, to look for this because maybe they'll ask you for a strength and a need. That uh, may occur, and you never know, so be prepared for anything. Pack a lunch. Uh, describe an instructional strategy or an activity that's your lesson plan. So for whatever need you identify here, you've got to write an instructional strategy. It's a lesson plan. And finally, the last thing you'll do is provide a benefit for the strategy you're identifying. And like I said, I'd always be outlining these things. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice a little bit today. Uh, but when you do your outline, uh, I think that you can uh, probably uh, have access to a word processor of some kind, and hopefully they will allow you to do that. If not, that's uh, that certainly is unfortunate. But maybe they give you maybe they give you some scratch paper. You never know. Even though this is certainly not a math test, but you know, just a quick outline uh, is nothing more than putting down uh, you know a quick outline where you're just going to fill it in very briefly. Like this would be paragraph one paragraph two, paragraph three. You don't even need the paragraph symbols, obviously, but you're going to have to identify a need, a lesson plan, and a benefit, or a justification, uh, whatever is going to help you remember that. So that when you're going through this and you identify the issues that the student is having uh, based on the responses the student gives in here, you can simply uh, list these things off. And so the need you'll see is in uh, literal comprehension as a problem. Uh, what kind of lesson would be good for for that? You'll see what what they choose. I believe it's a, a think aloud. Although any kind of a graphic organizer would work, like an outline for this one or a story map. Since it's narrative text, probably a story map would be better. And then the uh, benefit of a think aloud, you know, there are metacognitive benefits, and I'll just put in meta right here. It's you know uh, strategic can apply it to other things and so forth. So you'll see how uh, that pans out when we take a look at the answer especially, but let's just get into this data together. So what's the milieu with this student? Let's see. It's, first of all, a first grade teacher is assessing a student's reading comprehension of a story that he reads fluently and accurately by having the student retell the story. So we know that this is, these are uh, the results of assessment data and that these child's going to be retelling the story. We know that the student is fluent and accurate on this level of text, which is good because if uh, fluency is in place, which it is, and I can even maybe put a check mark by that, fluency is in place and so is accuracy. So now we can focus really on uh, comprehension. Uh, one of the things you might want to do after noting the type of text this is, this is narrative text, as you'll see in a moment, is to write down like a little L-I-E. That stands for literal, inferential, and evaluative. And you can basically check off what the student has and what the student lacks using your own system. I would use check marks for what the child did correctly versus what the child did incorrectly. And when you do a retelling, you're really looking for a factual retelling and whether or not the student names all the details that, uh, that you want. Uh, but let's take a look at the, uh, the story first. So this is the story itself. It says, Pam is at school. She plays a new game called Red Light, Green Light. A girl tells her how to play the game. First, Pam has to run as fast as she can. She likes to run. When she runs fast, she can feel the wind on her face. 
Next, the girl says, red light. Pam has to stop. She must stand very still. The girl says, green light. Now Pam can run again. She runs fast. Pam likes the new game. She wants to play it with her friend Rosa after school. So after the student reads the story, the teacher asks him to retell the story in your own words. Printed below is the student's oral response. So clearly, if one is going to ask a uh, a child to retell a story, what you're looking for is factual understanding. Factual understanding, remember, is part of literal comprehension. That is the, uh, that is the focus. So how well does this child, liter how good is this child's literal comprehension? Well, let's take a look. It says, it's a story about some girls. One girl is named Pam. She doesn't know how to cross the street. So if you look at this part here, uh, doesn't know how to cross the street, clearly this child has read this text way too literally. Uh, the child, for example, uh, missed the entire uh, stated claim of this text, which is that they're talking about playing a game and there's even another girl helping her play the game. So this child doesn't have literal comprehension. Let's see what happens when the teacher tries to get at inferential comprehension. These are your how and why questions <clears throat> where the child's got to assemble the responses together and then um, predict what's going to happen next or uh, describe a character's actions or, or uh, behaviors or emotions or something like that. So the teacher then asks a targeted question, which is an inferential question, uh, to try to prompt the student to elaborate on his response. Below is the student's response to the question, how do you know that Pam needs to learn about crossing the street? So this is an inferential question. Um, do your WHs typically, minus the, uh, the why question, who and what and where and when are all your literal questions? This is an inferential question. Let's see how this child does. Because she doesn't even know about red lights and green lights. How red is for stop and green is for go. I think she's a little kid. And this other girl bosses her around. Pam wants to run in the wind, but the other girl makes her stop. She yells red light, and then Pam stops. I think the other girl tells her about crossing the street. The teacher then, uh, the teacher completes the assessment by asking the student, what else do you think Pam will do? The student responds, maybe Pam will tell the girl to stop bossing her around. Okay, so... If you look in our little list here, this child's lacking uh, both literal and inferential comprehension. I didn't see any evaluative comprehension questions. Uh, an, an evaluative uh, comprehension question would be something about, like, what would you do if you were Pam in the story? Or what would you do if you were teaching somebody a new game? And you could also ask evaluative questions like, what uh, should Pam have done? Did did Pam do the right thing, etc.? Okay, okay. So it's pretty clear what's going on in here. There's a, a lack of uh, literal comprehension, and that leads to uh, bad inferences. So I can put like no literal comprehension, no inferential comprehension. I wouldn't go much beyond that. And I would definitely in here be providing examples. I always want to do that for everything. Just always get in the habit of writing examples. That's what's going to uh, going to help you. Also, reviewing um, some standard uh, lessons for addressing comprehension problems. Think aloud as one. There are graphic organizers and story maps that you can also consider. So let's see what they picked in here. And notice they do uh, break this up into three parts, which is what I recommend. And you should do that just to make things easier for your assessor. Um, simply because they're not going to look for stuff. Uh, their job is to flunk you, remember that, so don't flunk. The student demonstrated difficulty with literal comprehension, which led uh, to his making incorrect inferences. Very clear statement of the need. Here's some support for it. Since the student read the story aloud fluently and accurately, his difficulty is probably not caused by inaccurate decoding or lack of fluency, but rather by a lack of attention to what he's reading. Therefore, the first thing I would do is have the student reread the story silently. And that's certainly true. If you read aloud, sometimes you focus more on performance. Um, in, if you do it silently, then you're not focusing maybe on performance. Another thing that could have been done in here, of course, is simply providing, uh, they, they, they could have simply provided examples of where the communication breakdown uh, occurs. Uh, let's take a look at what they recommend for a lesson, however. Um, if after the silent, pardon me, if after rereading the student still misses the main idea that the girls are playing a game, I would use think aloud and modeling to teach self-questioning as a comprehension strategy. Okay, so they named the, 
uh, intervention and they also provide a context for it, you should do the same. Let's take a look at how they write it up. To begin, I'd read aloud the first couple of lines of the story, pausing periodically to ask questions, which I'd answer myself. Since the student's primary difficulty is with literal comprehension, I would focus on literal questions. Where is Pam? What is she doing? Who is she with? Then as I continue reading and questioning and I have the student answer my questions, finally I'd encourage him to continue reading while I help him ask and answer his own questions. As a follow-up, I'd have him practice the self-questioning strategy out loud with other passages while I monitor him. So it's a very compact, uh, compact lesson that you could also describe very briefly how you'd use a story map. And story maps are really easy. It's just what happened first, what happened second, what happened third, what do you think is going to happen next, and then they draw it out or something like that maybe. Here's the benefit, and a lot of students really blow it on the benefit, so let's kind of pay attention to this. <clears throat> the strategy would be effective in improving the student's literal comprehension because it models and reinforces a technique you can use to monitor his own literal understanding as he reads. Whenever you write these benefits, I would try to emphasize um, several things. And let me see if I can actually type these in here for you. I would make sure that I discuss, especially in, and only if uh, the technique actually does this, and you can see how they sort of do it with uh, modeling and reinforcing a technique that student can use to monitor other um, uh, comprehension as you read other passages. But metacognition is uh, uh, cognition. Good, I did okay. So metacognition is one benefit. Also, if the activity is multisensory, Only if it's multisensory, and I don't see this being multisensory. You know, if the student had been maybe uh, completing a graphic organizer and so forth, maybe that would be multisensory or acting it out or something like that. Um, there's also, uh, if it's visual, include that. And with visual, uh, that would be for graphic organizers. So the student can actually see the information. And so just try to think of any other senses or any other things that are being used to make that reading in that uh, passage clear to that student is what you want to do. <clears throat> so let's move to this part. This assignment assesses one or more competencies in domain five. Domain five is comprehension, remember. The response fulfills the purpose of the assignment by discussing the student's reading <clears throat> need and literal comprehension, describing an effective strategy for addressing the student need by promoting his use of self-questioning during reading and explaining why this approach would enhance the student's uh, comprehension. The writer accurately identifies the student's literal comprehension need as well as the consequences of that need and correct inferences. The writer also demonstrates understanding of the interrelationship between decoding and fluency and comprehension and that rereading a text enhances a student's fluency and comprehension with respect to that text. The writer goes on to demonstrate knowledge of an effective strategy for enhancing the student's literal comprehension by using think aloud and guided practice to promote his use of self-questioning. The writer supports this, uh, the response with relevant accurate details regarding the type of questions to use when modeling the self-questioning for literal, literal comprehension, the importance of giving student follow-up practice um, activities for practice, and a clear rationale explaining why the strategy described can be expected to improve the student's literal comprehension. So once again, um, this is the second of two lesson planning questions that you have to deal with. <clears throat> if I can just show this to you uh, once again and, and just remind you of a couple things before we, we uh, move on. The case study counts the most, and that's the last uh, essay that I'll cover in this uh, series of videos. These two are lesson planning questions, and they count for more points based on the word counts. That's how we know that, based on the word counts that we see in here. So uh, the first two essays don't count for very much. So one thing that I would certainly recommend that you do is just work this test uh, backwards, maybe doing something like outlining uh, from the case study all the way to assignment A, doing the multiple choice, going back and filling in the outlines, or doing the ones that you know first and then going back and, and, and uh, proceeding that way. Uh, but again, this is your test and your experience. So if you find it difficult to make the mouse work and take notes and do whatever it is they ask you to do on that test, if that's problematic for you, um, then just do the test from beginning to end. Uh, don't overcomplicate this. There's absolutely no reason to do that. Okay? All right. 
Um, we'll go over the case study next and over uh, complicate that one for uh, for something to do.